Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. There is no doubt in my highly educated mind that Double Dragon is one of the most important video game franchises in history. The original entry in the series from way back in 1987 would help define the beat-em-up genre as a whole, establishing two-player cooperative action in one of these brawling affairs for the first time ever. To help pay tribute to the Double Dragon brand, a couple of years ago on this channel I began to undertake the tall task of producing deep dive historical retrospectives looking at every single Double Dragon title that has ever been made. On the surface, this may not sound too ridiculous until you learn that there has been a crazy amount of entries in this roller coaster of a gaming series, featuring highs and lows and everything in between. This episode marks the final stop on our journey of looking at every single Double Dragon game out there, with us today focusing on yet another lost entry from a franchise that is impossible to purchase anywhere today. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the other Lost Double Dragon game. Yeah! As awesome as Double Dragon can be at times, there is no denying that each game's quality is like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You never know what you are going to get. From genre-defining games like the first two in the series developed by Yoshihisa Kishimoto, to the downright awful American-produced Double Dragon 5 fighting game, Double Dragon can certainly be very strange at times. Since there has been multiple failed attempts to completely reinvent the franchise in the past, in more recent years the majority of Double Dragon games have opted to pander towards nostalgia, rather than attempting to completely reinvent the wheel. The first example of this being done well was with the release of Double Dragon Advance for the GBA, a game I have praised countless times in the past on here, by reimagining the Maiden entry in the series and introducing Billy and Jimmy to a more modern audience. This game took the original, improved the graphics, made the combat deeper and even added new stages, resulting in a title that many consider to be the greatest Double Dragon game ever made. As highlighted in the past, another development team would undertake the same challenge with the release of Double Dragon for the Zebo, the obscure digital-only game console that was created for the South American market. Like Double Dragon Advance before it, this title is both a remake and an expansion of the 1987 game simultaneously. The title features enhanced graphics, new villains and even takes some characters from Double Dragon 2. Perhaps one of the most alluring elements of this game though is the fact that you can slowly unlock and play as every character in the game, giving this version endless replayability in comparison to some of the games that came before it. What is sad though is due to this game being a Zebo exclusive and the Zebo service now no longer being accessible, this game is no longer purchasable and can only be played if you happen to possess a Zebo with the game preloaded onto it, making this media very difficult to access indeed, as Zebo emulation on PCs is simply not a thing. Two years after the release of Double Dragon Zebo, yet another downloadable only Double Dragon game would be made available, which would be yet another remake and expansion of the classic 1987 game. Developers bloody love making new versions of this influential title. Due to the fact that this game was developed to run on iOS, it is very easy to write off this Double Dragon game as no more than a mobile title. Hell, it is a mobile title, but it is certainly a retro game for such a platform with a lot more love crafted into it than most. Double Dragon Mobile that was eventually made available for both iOS and Android was developed by Brizzo Interactive, the same Brizzo Interactive who had made the Zebo game two years earlier, making this mobile game basically a remake of a remake. Once again, this game would introduce a range of new features that were not included within the original game from Bluetooth multiplayer functionality to an online score ranking system, new artwork and sprites and much much more. Double Dragon Mobile was far more than a lazy simple arcade game conversion. One of the many new features of Double Dragon Mobile would be the additional illustrations and cutscenes that would help progress the story. Like in the game of old, the title stars martial arts brothers Billy and Jimmy who live in a post-nuclear apocalyptic setting. Once again, they must leave their small kung fu dojo and head off on a quest to rescue the damsel in distress, Marion, who of course once more is being held captive by Machine Gun Willie and his Black Warriors gang. The game's opening cutscene with all its new artwork retells this classic story. 
If you have played other versions of Double Dragon, you will be more than familiar with this plot and characters mentioned. However, there are some new faces who pop up along the way as the action in the game progresses. Once players have selected a difficulty set in, just like in days of old, whether in single player or two player, the Lieb brothers commence to brawl their way through the city slums of stage one. Instantly, old school Double Dragon fans will notice the huge graphical overhaul that this game features, which now includes extra details such as new posters on walls and even extra characters watching the action stand in the background. As for the combat in this reimagining of a reimagining, being a mobile game, a standard non-hacked version of the title features on-screen controls so that players can enjoy the title using a touchscreen interface. However, these controls can also be mapped to traditional buttons for classic gamers such as most of you watching today. Using these buttons, gamers can obviously punch, kick or take advantage of the character's special dragon abilities. The game also brings back the dash functionality which is executable via a double directional tap. Combining dashes with attack commands also allows the brothers to perform new additional manoeuvres too. Like in classic Double Dragon games, certain enemies hold weapons which can be taken by the player to be wielded against opponents, which can either be swung around like a madman or be thrown and launched at enemies from afar. Bigger changes to the game include its HUD counter which documents how many chain attacks a player has executed successively, which is always a nice addition to a beat em up. By executing successful chain attacks, this slowly fills up players' new limit gauge, which if filled allows Bimmy and Jimmy to perform limit breaks for the first time in an official game. These limit breaks give the bros a momentary advantage, increasing their attacking strength. As for our first stage in the slums, gamers with a keen ear will notice a remix of the original game's first stage theme, and when encountering classic villain, a Bobo for the first time, he breaks through a fence before another cutscene begins to play. Before this boss encounter and each going forward, cheesy written dialogue is exchanged between the baddie and playable characters, adding to the drama before each big fight unfolds. After taking down these tougher opponents, who each have their own life bars, usually they reveal further information and tips regarding the whereabouts of Marion, which helps push the story along. Clearing each stage also results in the player receiving a score and experience points being rewarded. These points can be used in the game to buy and unlock new power-ups, improving the brawler's arsenal of moves. Further to this, scores in the past could also be used for the game's online now defunct leaderboards. Stage 2 sees our heroes head to the factory stage, another familiar classic setting that has received a brand new coat of paint and remixed music. There are also new enemy sprites here who have not appeared in previous games, but at least ropey old Linda is back, eh? This stage culminates in a boss fight against Burnoff, a famous Double Dragon character who had originally debuted in 1988's Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Within his character dialogue, he flirts with the brothers, even referring to them as stunning examples of the Mal form. Not only do the brothers reject his advances, they proceed to fat shame him and beat him to a bloody pulp. Between certain stages, there are bonus levels such as this drum can crusher section where players must crush as many drum cans as possible before a time limit expires. Partaking in this minigame increases player scores and rewards more XP. Stage 3 of the game finally introduces the players to a completely new stage designed for the title, a school that has been taken over by the Black Warrior Gang. This educational institution that has been covered in vandalism features typical Double Dragon action with enemies jumping out from all sorts of hiding places, including high school lockers. It is not just this stage itself that is new though, as the M boss of the area is a new character too. The brothers are shocked and surprised that the boss is a woman, but they admit that they were getting tired of this sausage fest anyway. After this truly ridiculous dialogue exchange, players then take on Lavis Love, the game's first female boss who can wield a range of sharp objects against a player. Stage 4 sees another stage return from the classic game where the brothers brawl their way around a mountainous setting, where as usual players must avoid falling off the side of the cliff as they fight. The green Incredible Hulk like the Bobos are back here too with the stage ending with a boss battle against martial arts master Chin, who, once successfully defeated, surrenders info regarding Marion's whereabouts. 
Stage 5 is another brand new area. This stage has a nightclub theme with Billy and Jimmy having to take on bouncers and a range of female opponents in this neon laden area. Throughout the stage there are crowds of party goers watching the action unfold from the background as players take out opponent after opponent. As players reach the end of the stage the next boss can be seen on the sofa in the background hidden in shadow. It is soon revealed that the boss of this area is yet another woman, with the brothers being surprised that in their own words they have to fight another babe. Amusingly, they also state that they are impressed that the Black Warrior Gang appear to be striving for gender equality in the workplace. And once again, I am not making up this dialogue, this all actually happens. When combat commences against this villainess, she can execute a range of breakdancing moves and even runs like one of those idiot nerds who tried to occupy Area 51 in 2019. Once players have defeated Machine Gun Willie's niece, it is on to the final stage to rescue Marion hopefully for real this time. The final level, the Black Warriors Gang's hideout, mirrors the stage from games of old containing plenty of enemies and crazy traps in order to hinder gamers' progress. All of this will be very familiar to experienced Double Dragon players. The game concludes with a boss rush against previous opponents players have had to take down in the game previously, before of course finally taking on Machine Gun Willy himself. The fight includes the epic classic Double Dragon theme as the brothers take on the game's final villain along with his hordes and hordes of goons. Defeating him allows the player to save Marion, bringing the title to a true close. The game's credits roll with the brothers driving along the seafront in a convertible with Marion riding in the back. For those who want something more though, the game is not quite completely over, as like Double Dragon Zebo before this, upon completion, players can unlock new characters to players so that they can enjoy this beat em up in an all new way all over again, adding a level of replayability that was not available with the original arcade version. As you can see from all of this, far more love, care and attention was put into this title than what you would expect with the average throwaway microtransaction laden mobile game, with this title even going as far as to build on the original. For this reason, it is a crying shame that this game is no longer available to purchase in digital stores and preservationists must now rely on more complex means in order to experience this Double Dragon media. Both this entry and the Zebo game are both shining examples of great little titles that are no longer officially available. However, before we can truly conclude this story, there is one more Lost Double Dragon game that I feel I also need to touch on. This one, however, is so lost there is not even any gameplay of this one functioning online. The game I am referring to is the obscure 2004 cellular version of the game published by Bandai. However, by the looks of the screenshots, we are not really missing much with this one. However, I thought it was worth a mention to acknowledge that it has not been completely forgotten. At least by me, anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of another Lost Double Dragon game. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of today's video and if you have given this obscure Double Dragon game a good whirl in the past. If you are new here and enjoyed today's video, I have individual uploads covering the other 14 Double Dragon games that you may want to check out. I believe I am likely the only man on the internet who is crazy enough to have undertaken such a ridiculous endeavour. Be sure to like this video, hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell to ensure that you do not miss future uploads. Lastly, I would like to give a huge thank you to those who back this channel on Patreon, allowing me to work on non-algorithm friendly content like this on a full time basis. So special shout outs go out to Sebastian Velez, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heyo Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corio Marsh Senior, Capcom vs SNK, Rowan Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Azure Archive, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Azana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang, He Drew, Peacock, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Flamit Renee, Marvin Araliga, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Fiant, John Bates, David Bale, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs what I do on the Patreon platform. It is very, very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Cheerio.